Hey, Melissa Zales Kohler, Weston, Connecticut. I am on the Board of Finance with the Town of Weston, a member, it's a seven member elected board. We moved to town in 1990 and we had no children and we moved here for the beautiful, lovely residential two acre zoning and, you know, fabulous property for the money. And we fell in love with the place and we had kids or we had one child and we heard Weston had great schools and we thought, this is wonderful because here we are in Weston with the great schools. And then we moved to Amsterdam for five years and when we got back, we moved back to Weston because of the great schools um, and never realizing that in that time the population, the school population had doubled. Um, people were moving to Weston for the same reasons we chose it because it was beautiful, because it was a little less expensive than Westchester or even lower Fairfield County and the school population had exploded and the size of the schools had been unchanged since the 70s. So what we had was we moved back to Weston and I had two kids in school and a newborn and we had 24 portable um, classrooms with not any facilities to sustain them like gymnasiums, or cafeterias, libraries. So lunch would start at 10 o'clock in the morning and end at 2 and the kids were, you know, running outside through the rain to get to their classrooms which were in trailer parks, you know, and you talk about a nice middle class community that's known for, for its terrific school system and it wasn't the facilities were not allowing it to reach its potential and every place else in Fairfield County they were increasing the size of their schools but Weston was a holdout. They were saying, you know, we've got these three schools, it's good enough, it was good enough for our kids in the 70s, if it was good enough for them, why isn't it good enough for your kids? And there was a very, very strong movement against expanding the size of our schools. So I had been in town, back in town for about a year, and there was basically an enormous challenge going on between proponents of building a new school and expanding the size of our high school, and those who really wanted Weston left as it was. And I believe their hope was that if they didn't build the schools, that people with children would move away. That it was basically, let's keep our schools mediocre so we don't attract those new people, and let's, let's just keep Weston the way it was, the way we remember it fondly. Um, and obviously I did not agree with that sentiment. Uh, you have to keep progressing. And you know, if, you're, if your housing prices are going to go from, if they're going to you know, go from what a, a fraction of what they were in the past to what they are now, it's because of the school system. You cannot do that without an excellent school system because in Weston that is, that is what our taxes are based on. There, we have nothing else here. Our only industry is our schools. I got very involved in the referendum to build the new to for the school building referendum. It involved three portions. It was a it was a major um, it, doubling the size of the high school, a brand new elementary school, and really about a million dollars in sports facilities as well. Um, actually, several million dollars in sports facilities, a lot of which was raised privately. In addition to this, um, and I worked very very hard as a part of the group. Um, there were a lot of chiefs. I was, I felt a really strong Indian in that group because I was learning. I was, it was the first time I'd been involved, um, you know, active in my community. And I sat in meetings and I thought, wow, these people are so amazing. Um, how come I never come up with these incredible ideas? How come I don't know how to do this? And um, by the end of this referendum, um, the very in the very last few days, I came up with an idea that was actually really good and we implemented it in the in the days just prior to the referendum and we squeaked by on one of the uh, there were three different votes on the intermediate school which is the gem of our school system we squeaked by by a couple of votes and i feel like my contribution to that referendum really put us over the top and that was sort of the beginning About a year later, a year and a half later, a group within the community said, you know something, things have changed since we voted and we are petitioning the selectmen to re-vote the intermediate school referendum. We want to vote again because we believe that the circumstances have changed dramatically enough. And so here we were a year and a half later, all of the architect's plans were in place. You know, over a million dollars had been spent and there was a group petitioning 
to stop the whole project cold because if you took away one part of the plan, everything else, you, all of the all of the approvals that you'd gotten for the whole plan fell apart. So the high school wouldn't have been added onto, the sports facilities wouldn't have been built. And here they, the, the argument was, we don't need this school. We have enough room in our schools, which was, it was ridiculous. It was honestly, we have something called Kinderland, which is a series of 10 portable classrooms in a row that we, we put our kindergartners all in Kinderland across the street and they would have to cross the street to come over to do art or cross the street to come over to the library once a week. And if the weather was bad, they didn't have art or they didn't have library or they didn't have PE. And, and so the argument I, I felt was ridiculous and I led the second referendum for the intermediate school, which won by a landslide. And here I was ready to become a chief. I really felt like I had the skills to organize this thing, to, to, to accept good ideas, to weed out, you know, what might not be the path to go. And we ran a terrific campaign and it was, it was very rewarding. Following that, I guess that pegged me as an education person. Um, and I had, I had, um, I had created a political action committee so that we could fund the campaign for the referendum. And it was called WISE, Weston in Support of Education. And we refiled as a permanent ongoing PAC, um, same leadership, but um, instead of a one issue, one election PAC, it was ongoing supporting education in Weston and bringing public awareness to the importance of our public education. And we have done a lot of good work, especially in terms of advocating for smaller class size and um, budget proposals when the Board of Ed budget is up and WISE is an ongoing entity. I am in the background now, I, um, when I went on to the Board of Ed, I gave up my position as president of WISE, but it's nice to see it continuing in its advocacy role. And it has taken an important part in our community of letting the parents know what are important issues, um, letting them know that they need to be involved in, um, in local issues, that your vote for selectmen or for Board of Ed or for Board of Finance is really important because it will affect your child's education. And fast forward, the reason I'm on the Board of Finance is because the Board of Finance controls the education budget in this town. And without giving them a blank check, it is very important. I felt that I was best able to support education by being on the Board of Finance. Just a sense of responsibility that sitting back and hoping that somebody else will do it isn't good enough because it's not going to get done. And whether do. it's supporting the arts or whether it's coaching Little League or it's doing something entirely different than I do, just the idea that whatever your passion is, you need to follow it and you need to make it happen.